any kind of split, and it's always good to have a block if you can get one, because it, it takes the bounce out of it. As we're hitting this thing, there's a danger that we're just driving it into the ground, and it's not actually cutting very efficiently. My experience teaching with people, when they start to cut themselves, you can notice this action, I'm just going up and down, up and down, is when they start to try and come round here. So what I mean by that really is that if I want to change the angle, I don't change the angle of the axe. I change the angle of the workpiece to change what I'm going to do. And the other secret is not to try and take too much too, too soon. So I do lots and lots of stop cuts and then try and knock them off. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm strangling the axe and I'm getting some counterweight from the length of the handle. It's helping with the bounce. So it's not quite so um, full on in terms of physical effort. I put the workpiece and then all this muscle and bone on the outside of my leg in between my femoral artery and the axe. So I really don't want to be in this position with an axe at all, potentially coming down in here um, or any other variations of. So what, what I've done is I've placed the, uh, the log on the far side of the block to give me something to hit should I miss it, if that makes sense. It's not such a problem with a, a long shafted axe because if I'm far enough away and I miss the log completely, it's quite likely to just bury itself in the ground. But you could imagine in more of a camping scenario, if I miss this stump completely, the thing is swinging back towards me. It's going to miss that stump completely and potentially stick myself in the leg. So there's a couple of ways you can deal with that with a short axe. You could go back to basics and just split with a batten. I'm just weakening this and then I'll go for the thumping it through. So you can get your firewood that way. And you can see at 90 degrees and the axe is burying itself into the wood. I'm in no real danger there. The other thing you can do is you can lessen the arc of that swing by kneeling down. So you can see if I come back and kneel down here and I miss, I'm going to hit the stump this time. As opposed to when I'm stood up, if I miss the stump or miss the log, then it's going to swing much more um, closer to my legs. I'll demonstrate the, um, the splitting of the wood with this axe because it's more obvious, um, because the technique is much more um, applicable because of the weight of the axe. So generally what we're doing with, uh, with an axe that's got any weight, we're going to have to carry the head up and then across our shoulders. You don't have to bring it over the top of your head, so you don't necessarily need any safety equipment there. It should just come onto your shoulders. And at some point during the swing, it's going to come across my shoulder. My right hand's going to slide down, and I'm going to try and align that axe head with the centre of my body and the centre of my chest. So again, while you're learning, it makes sense to think, well, these two feet here form the bottom of a warning triangle, and the axe is the apex of that. So if you have one foot further forward than the other and you miss, again, there's much more chance of you stuffing, it, stuffing the axe into your leg, which obviously we don't want. The other thing I'm going to do, because I want to use the, the weight of the axe to help me, there's no point you know, using lots and lots of physical force. If you've got to fill a log shed, for example, you're just going to wear yourself out. And to help that and to help save, you, save your back a little bit is you can bend at the knees. That keeps your back straight, so if you're bending over, and also adds a little bit more power into the swing. So it's kind of that. See my knees squat, give it that extra thump that allow you to, to smash that wood quite evenly and quite cleanly. Once you get these billets to a certain size, obviously it becomes quite difficult to hit a small target like this by swinging it. So we could, to make kindling, a smaller diameter firewood, we could go back to our battening. Or we could, if the wood's splitting well, make this sort of motion and make our firewood this way. Again, perfectly safe because you're just starting the split with the axe. And once it's starting, there's a very slight twist down there. Don't try and do this on wood that's very knotty or on species that isn't breaking up open very, uh, very easily because this twist in action on the axe is probably one of the worst things you can do to an axe. If you get an axe stuck, which is inevitable, if you use an axe long enough, when we are trying to free it, we need to be doing lateral movements that way. 
not side to side movements this way and gradually trying to loosen it. Don't do what I did um, when I was in a field spl splitting some wood for a farmer years and years ago. I put my hand right next to it, managed to get the axe out and then the cut closed on my skin and I had a round of, of wood about this big and my hand stuck in it holding onto this flesh here which was quite painful but more embarrassing than anything because it was before mobile phones I couldn't drive my car and I was just stuck in the middle of the field with a log attached to my hand um, quite painful as well.